Welcome to the Enterprise Browser Development Fundamentals. Here, you will learn how to build rich web applications for our enterprise browser-based solutions. To be more specific, here's a detailed list of what you will be able to do after completing this course. We will start by taking a closer look at the enterprise browser architecture and principles of operation. Then check out the demo application that will help us understand how it really works. The course continues as a series of tutorials that will introduce you to the key features, APIs, and guiding principles of EB development. By the end of the course, you will know enough to write simple apps yourself and more complex apps with the help of product manuals and your colleagues from our Launchpad portal. After you're done, we encourage you to challenge yourself to a full-blown app to test your skill and understanding. Check back on Launchpad if you have any questions or want to share your experiences and exchange opinions with your colleagues. To get the most out of this training, you should have a good understanding of web development technologies and file transfer techniques for various types of devices. If you feel you need to catch up a little, this knowledge is widely available on the internet. Check out websites such as w3schools.com. We are also offering a one-day intensive instructor-led course under the code MBS2011. Find it on our learning portal and read the description to learn more. This course focuses on the technical aspects of Enterprise Browser. If you are wondering why it was needed in the first place, what challenges does it solve, and what are the key messages around it, be sure to check out our brief Enterprise Browser Overview video, code MBS0004, that will answer all of these questions. Let's begin with the technical overview of the Enterprise Browser. So, what is Enterprise Browser, technically speaking? First, we took a choice of browser rendering engines. On Android, you'll want to use the native WebKit-based WebView, but on Windows, you can choose between Stock IE or our own cross-platform build of WebKit. That will give you the HTML rendering power compared to or exceeding the native OS capabilities. Second, we have added plugins that provide access to advanced device features that normal browsers cannot access. Barcode scanner and camera integration, signature capture, printing, and much more. We then exposed these features through JavaScript DOM extensions so they are easily accessed from a web app. Third, we have put a highly flexible and customizable Chrome browser UI, or shell if you like, on top, which allows you to configure custom indicators, full screen, lockdown, multiple tabs to ensure that the browser best matches your application needs. Finally, we put in a lot of logging and debugging tools and optimizations to aid developers but they did not fit into this slide. Now, the question you might want to ask, why did we make it this way? What is the point? These are good questions. The point is simple, to enable you to build enterprise-grade web apps. Ever wanted that legacy IE to wither slowly away? so you could use the whole power of HTML5 and Web 2.0. Now you can, even on WM and CE. How many times have you considered incompatibilities between browsing engines in different operating systems? With our cross-platform WebKit build, you can have apps that look and behave just the same on different OSs. Do you need advanced control of indicators, lights, screen rotation, scanner, printer, etc.? Now you can, right from your app, without having to devise complex workarounds and integration schemes. Do you need to hide the browser UI and only leave the battery and WLAN signal? 
Or do you want a full screen app that the user cannot exit? Or do you need to provide other UI customizations to enhance user productivity and keep them on task? Here's where you'll appreciate the customizable UI. And if you need to run multiple apps or run simple apps offline or sync, you can do it as well. This may be not as powerful as the full-featured Row mobile framework, but it can fit in some cases. Do you want logging extensibility, manageability, backwards and forwards compatibility for your projects? That's why we've put it in. And finally, how many times have you encountered frameworks that were abandoned somewhere down their life cycle because their developers had other life priorities? school, work, travel, etc. Would you want to use something like this for your project? Enterprise Browser is a proper product with proper support lifecycle, designed for the enterprise. Not to mention that the first industrial browser ever, the Symbol Pocket Browser, released more than 10 years ago, is still supported by us. Of course, there is also the fine print. That's why this training is here, so you know what to expect. And speaking of support, the key resource we will be referring to very often is the Launchpad Community Portal. You can see the URL on your screen. Why do you think we're so persistent mentioning it? This is your hub for all things Enterprise Browser. Tutorials, downloads, references, news, and your fellow colleagues on the forums, blogs, and QAs, sharing their experiences, solving the same problems that you do. So get connected right now. Membership is free. In terms of compatibility, Essentially, you may think of Enterprise Browser as an evolution of our previous IE, Internet Explorer-based pocket browser product, fitted with the modern engine, latest web features, and APIs from the Row Elements runtime. Thus, Enterprise Browser is compatible with all these products. Furthermore, when you have special concerns regarding pocket browser compatibility, you can even instruct Enterprise Browser to run the Pocket Browser IE-based rendering engine. This will ensure the most precise legacy simulation possible, but of course, it limits your access to the newest modern web features that only WebKit offers. Guess which one we recommend to use at all times? WebKit, of course. Anyway, you now have a choice and, as usual, Terms and conditions apply, so ensure you take a look at the migration topic on the Enterprise Browser Launchpad page for compatibility details of your project. So how exactly does EB compare to Pocket Browser then? Enterprise Browser is similar to Pocket Browser in that it can run Pocket Browser applications and it can be set to use and configure the Internet Explorer browser engine. Enterprise Browser and Pocket Browser both support meta tags and the invoke meta function. They both also support Zebra Windows Mobile and Windows CE devices. Enterprise Browser differs from Pocket Browser in that it also provides support for Row Elements, Row Mobile, and HTML5 APIs. Support for the WebKit WebView is available in Enterprise Browser and not in Pocket Browser. In addition to Zebra Windows Mobile and CE devices, Enterprise Browser also supports Zebra Android devices. And what about Row? Enterprise Browser is similar to Row Elements and Row Mobile in several ways. It runs Row Elements applications, uses the WebKit engine, supports Zebra Android, Windows Mobile, and Windows CE devices. 
Enterprise Browser supports many APIs from Row Elements and Row Mobile, except the more complex ones, such as ORM, Row Connect Client, etc., as well as HTMI features and APIs. Enterprise Browser differs from Row Elements in Row Mobile in that it also supports Enterprise Browser and Pocket Browser APIs and Pocket Browser compatible web views. Unlike Row Elements and Row Mobile, Enterprise Browser does not support iOS, Windows Phone, Win32, or non Zebra devices. Enterprise Browser cannot generate native web applications or EXEs like Row Elements. Row is a complex framework with lots of features, so naturally it takes a while to learn it all. Enterprise Browser is quicker to learn when you need to deploy simpler projects, likewise when it comes to deployments. When building an enterprise-grade app, you want to ensure it's supported, don't you? Enterprise Browser is supported across a wide spectrum of Zebra devices and operating systems. There are inevitable restrictions, though. Some older devices do not have enough power to run the modern WebKit engine, so user experience will suffer terribly. Thus, they are either limited to a stock browsing engine or not supported at all. A full compatibility matrix is available in the release notes. Where do you think you will find them?